On May 14, 2009, the Chrysler Corporation, without warning, notified 789 franchise dealers that their franchises would be permanently terminated without compensation, buyouts, or negotiation, including their oldest, in fact, the world's oldest Dodge dealership, Taters Dodge. Reason given? That based on their business judgment, these dealerships had become burdensome. The Insider Exclusive will go behind the headlines to examine the real reasons behind Chrysler's motives and how their actions, should they succeed, will destroy great businesses like Taters Dodge. We'll also show you how the law firm of Entwistle and Capucci is trying to protect Taters Dodge in court. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive live from South Salem, New York at Taters Dodge, the world's oldest Dodge dealership. Today we're going to feature a real-life David and Goliath story. One man struggled to prevent Chrysler Corporation from shutting down his business, and with us will be his family, his friends, his business associates, a U.S. congressman, the town supervisor, and of course, his customers. Stay tuned. I want to welcome the man of the hour, Chuck Tater. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Steve. Thank you. We have come all the way from California because this is an important event. Tater Dodge has been around for 95 years. Tell us a little bit about the Tater Dodge history. Well, my grandfather started uh, selling Dodges and signed up with the Dodge Brothers in 1914. Uh, we were the third uh, family to sign up with with uh, the Dodge brothers, Horace and John. And um, uh, one of the, the only one remaining of the original yeah, 25. Yeah, out of the original right? 25 Dodge dealerships. Uh, so it's passed through three generations, hasn't it? Yes, I'm third, and, gen third generation. And I understand that you started working in the, and this is the original barn here. You started yes. working here when you were 12 years old? Yes, I started sweeping floors for a dollar an hour. <laughs> I think the quote was that you used, you were weaned on grease, yes. correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, this is your life, isn't it? Yeah. I've and been working here all my life except for four years of the Air Force. I understand that you are, um, uh, you're also nicknamed the King of the Vipers. Yeah, they call me the Viper Wizard. That's yeah. the nickname they've given me. Okay. Uh, but we specialize in the Vipers. Well, we see a lot of Vipers here today, in fact, right here in the garage. And uh, you are contacted by people from all over the world, aren't you? Correct. The reason we're here today is you have a major legal problem with Chrysler Corporation. Tell our audience what it is. Well, Chrysler Corporation is closing down 789 dealers. Um, to, to the actual reason, they say that they're going to save more money by closing dealers. But the dealers on that list are arguing the point that we're going to lose a lot more jobs. And in this economy, we really can't afford that. And then the trickle-down effect to the communities is going to be huge. Your lawyer has filed uh, an objection with the court. Uh, we're going to have him on later, Andrew Entwistle of the law firm of Entwistle and Capucci, um, objecting to closing you down. Um, and he's doing this uh, because he's a customer here, isn't he? Yes, he is. And that's very generous of him to do that. But I think th the main issue here is they're not even giving you or any of these 788 other dealerships the opportunity to be heard, are they? No, not really. Um, that's why I've, I'm starting to speak out because we are, I am the last and we are the last original Dodge dealership. We're their history also. Since 1915? 1914. 1914. You have index cards with customers going back to 1920s, don't yeah, you? Yeah, a lot of those cards are way back. It's amazing. Yeah. Are you ever going to computerize that? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. It okay. would take so long. It, wow. If it works, why fix yeah. it? You know? you know, one of the hardest things that, you know, you can buy a new car. You know, the hardest thing, you're always going to need a mechanic, and the hardest thing to find is a good mechanic. Correct. People come from miles around to have their car serviced from you, don't they? Correct. Yes, they do. 
and that's the buying of the car is only a small portion of ownership. Mm -hmm. um, you do need someone that's good with whatever brand vehicle to make it last and mm -hmm. make ownership uh, worthwhile. What is going on, as you know it, with the court case? There's a hearing coming up when? Yes, we have a meeting with all of the attorneys on the third, okay. Chrysler attorneys and all the dealer's attorneys. This is in the courtroom? I believe so, yes. Okay. Basically what they're saying, it is in their best judgment, business judgment, to be able to dump uh, roughly, what, 789 dealers that represent only 14 or 15 percent of the sales. Correct. Um, for the betterment of the new Chrysler, correct? That's what I've been told, yes. Uh, I was reading the legal papers and it was kind of interesting where initially when Chrysler went to Congress, they said that they needed some bailout money to preserve the corporation and to protect all 3,100 dealers, you included. Correct. As soon as they got that money, they turned around and now they're saying that in order to consummate the sale with fiat, that they have to dump these not unprofitable, but businesses that aren't producing as much, right? We're all profitable. Yeah. One car sale is a profit to the corporation. Yeah, and, and I want to point that out. You don't cost Chrysler one penny, do you? Not that I know of. I own everything. The, in, in, what, in my research, I've seen that the only double or the only contribution that Chrysler might make or a, you know, a major corporation might make is in the co-op advertising. Correct. You don't do any advertising, do you? Hardly any. It's, uh, my business is word of mouth. And that's your best advertising anyway. What effect in closing you down will have on your business? Well, that's going to restrict me from ordering parts, doing warranty work. Um, it's going to put a big damper on, on my business. You will not be able to sell Chrysler products, right? Correct. The people that live in this town, they will have to travel quite a distance to go get service under their warranties? Correct. To buy new Chrysler products? Correct. It's kind of curious. How's that going to help the new Chrysler? I don't know. I can't figure that one out. And I know most of my customers, uh, if I can't get them a Dodge, they're, they're going to go to a different brand. It's also been brought up that by slimming down, reducing the number of dealerships, it'll increase the profits at some of the bigger auto dealerships. Um, you sell on an average right now of about 30 cars a year, right? Correct. What kind of threat is that to any other dealership anywhere? I don't see it as a threat to any, any other <laughs> dealership at all. Back in 1971, Chrysler was on the brink then too. Mm -hmm. And Chrysler came to a lot of dealers and said, help us out, right? Correct. And you made a financial investment yes. into Chrysler, right? Yes, my family did. Yeah. Yes. Your family yeah. did, and you've, done, you've been the most loyal Chrysler dealership, the most historic uh, Dodge dealership in the history of Chrysler, haven't you? Correct. In yes. fact, your dealership is two years older than Chrysler Corporation, period, isn't it? Yeah, well, Chrysler uh, started with Walter P. Chrysler right. in, in the late 20s. Yes. But the Dodge Brothers started building in 1914. Yeah. And then uh, Walter P. Chrysler bought the Dodge Brothers after they passed in, in, the, in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And we've been, uh, yeah, we're 95 years. June 15th, it'll be 95 years. Now I want to welcome to the show Congressman John Hall. Welcome to the show, Congressman. Thank you so much. I understand you're the Congressman of the 19th District in New mm -hmm. York. And this is the district uh, where uh, Chuck has his business, correct? Taters Dodge is, uh, I'm happy to say, in my district. Why is it important to save Taters Dodge? Well, Taters Dodge uh, employs uh, 30, some 38 people, something like that. People who work here who spend money in the community, who have, uh, uh, have to feed their families and buy clothes and buy a sandwich on the way to the work, and the, the ripple effect throughout the economy uh, will uh, extend beyond just Tater Stodge. Yes. But also, Tater Stodge is really a symbol of the automobile industry, which I think is essential to our national security mm -hmm. uh, in this country as I would say steel and aircraft manufacturing are too. There are a few essential industries we need to keep uh, alive. And, uh, and they're one of the first Dodge dealers 95 years ago uh, to come on board with uh, Dodge, which became uh, united with Chrysler. And they're profitable. So uh, if the parent company is, uh, is not profitable, 
for the second time, by the way. Yes. Uh, back a couple of decades ago when Chrysler was bailed out uh, by the government and Lee Iacocca worked for a dollar a year, uh, Mr. Tater's family put a substantial sum of uh, thousands of dollars, I don't know exactly how much, uh, into uh, bailing out Chrysler. Right. And now they're being told, even though they're in the black, they're being told that they're thrown overboard uh, for reasons that are not being explained. So I just don't think it's just and fair. What are you doing in Congress to help them? Well, out? I've written a letter to Stephen Ratner, who's the counsel to the Secretary of the Treasury, asking him to uh, have the task force reconsider uh, this decision and uh, retract it and provide us with transparent criteria as to who's being shut down and why. Right. I mean, it would make sense to close down dealerships maybe that are unprofitable, mm -hmm. but ones that are not costing Chrysler money. I mean, uh, Tater is, is uh, making money for Chrysler. And when the time comes that Chrysler uh, produces a new line of vehicles that they want to get out there and, and sell, if they have fewer dealerships, uh, I don't know how they're going to recover that market share. Right. Yeah, you brought up a good point about in 1971 that Tater family came to the rescue along with other dealers, you know, of Chrysler. That's a sign of loyalty. Loyalty yeah, yeah. counts in this country. And the same loyalty should be, you know, from the company to exactly. the dealers. I'm very pleased to have our next guest on here, Ed Brancati. He's the town supervisor of South Salem. Welcome to the show. Thanks. You're very much involved with helping save Chuck's business. What are you doing locally so that we, everybody can know what's going on, that this business should not be shut down by Chrysler? Well, I think a lot of the, uh, certainly Chuck's customers, I'm one of them, um, are extremely loyal, uh, fiercely loyal, and for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an outstanding business. Uh, it has been since his grandfather started it. It's been a, a vital part of the community for, for nearly 95 years. Um, uh, 95 years actually together. So um, they helped. Uh, the first fire truck for the South Salem Fire Department came from came from the Taters. So uh, they've been a, a vital part of the community. And we don't have enough businesses here in town. Um, we need to. We're trying to increase uh, and bring more businesses into town, uh, which help with the tax base. But we certainly can't afford to lose one of our longest uh, standing and best businesses uh, in town. So, uh, you know, getting customers out, getting uh, supporters out. Uh, there's been a lot of people in the community who have bought and had their vehicles serviced here, um, who have written letters, who yeah. have responded in petitions, uh, who continue to, to make the case to executives at Chrysler. Um, and I think that grassroots effort is, is what we can do, have been doing, and will continue to do. Now I'm pleased to have with us right now Andrew Entwistle, who is the managing partner of Entwistle and Capucci, and also Chuck's lawyer. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Nice to see you again, Steve. You are not only a lawyer, but you're also a customer of Chuck's, aren't you? Well, I am. That's how we met originally. I came in uh, looking to buy a Dodge truck, and uh, I'd actually been to another dealership first, didn't like them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Chrysler has decided to keep that dealer open. Mm -hmm. um, even though their customer satisfaction uh, ratings are horrible and uh, no one wants to buy any vehicles there uh, and came up here to see Chuck uh, who's been long known in the industry up here and we became fast friends right mm -hmm. Chuck? So, yes. Uh, and that's why we're here today. Looking at the legal issues you filed an objection to have his dealership license terminated. What are the legal issues that you are presenting to the court? Well there are a few. The, the first requirement that Chrysler has is to show some type of burden yes. right, and that Chuck's dealership being here would be burdensome. Well, they can't do that. They have made no such showing for this dealership or any other for that matter. But in Chuck's case, people need to keep in mind that this dealership's been here since 1914. The Dodge brothers themselves are the ones that went to Chuck's grandfather and talked to him about opening the original dealership. He's completely independently financed. He has the best customer service ratings in the region. He's world-renowned, obviously, as a Dodge Viper right. uh, mechanic. And so that part of Dodge Chrysler's history is the first thing we're talking about. The second piece, of course, is when we, we talk about burden, it's a question of, of, of balancing. Bankruptcy court is a court of equity. Mm. And we're fortunate to have Judge Gonzalez, who's one of the hardest-working bankruptcy judges in the country and, and certainly one of the, the most equitable when it comes to that. And in that context, he has to kind of weigh the equities. He's got to look at, is there a hardship to Chrysler? Can they show some hardship? Have they shown a hardship? 
And then he's got to look at that and compare it to the hardship on Chuck and his family to take away this franchise, which has been in the family for almost 95 years. Now, Chrysler's trying to close these 789 dealerships by requesting a waiver of a certain bankruptcy rule. I think that's 6006. Explain to our audience what they're trying to do here and what that means. Well, what it really means is this. When under the bankruptcy code, a, a debtor, in other words, someone who's filed for bankruptcy, yeah. can come in and they can attempt to have executory contracts, contracts that they have out there in the world with vendors, with dealers, real estate agreements, etc., that they can have those voided by the bankruptcy court if they create a hardship on the debtor. In other but they words, have to it, prove that, right? They have to prove that. Typically, they come in and do that one at a time. And there's actually a provision in the code that says, look, the most you can do at once is 100 of those. Yes. Because obviously it's really difficult for a court to consider all the nuances of a lot of contracts if you have more than you know, even one or two at a time, much yes. less 100. What they attempted to do here was come in and say, look, all of these franchise agreements are the same or substantially the same. But not all the franchises are the same. And that's our point. Yeah. In other words, Dodge is saying we, can, we should have a waiver and we should be able to lump all of these together because the underlying agreements are the same. Yes. And we've come in and said, how is that possibly the case? In Chuck's case, his grandfather sat with the Dodge brothers and shook hands over their original agreement. Right. Their history that informs the current agreements is so different than any other dealership in the country. In fact, they're the last, right? You're the last family-owned dealership of those original 25 dealers in the nation. So there's no way that Chuck's situation can ever be equated to any of the others. And of course, there are probably lots of nuances between different dealers. Mm -hmm. And up until Friday, I think there were 179 or so objections filed by different dealers around the country yes. you know, to these situations. So same it's kind easy. of basis, same kind well, of circumstances. You know, they raise a lot of similar issues yeah. Um, in terms of the general, generic legal issues, but obviously none of them have the history that, that Chuck and his family do. I, I think the real message here is, is really a very simple one, that the bedrock of the of Dodge Chrysler is family. And family businesses like Chuck Taters, the integrity and character that they represent mm -hmm. is the integrity and, and character that people had associated with Dodge Chrysler in the early days. And I think it's the character that and integrity and family values that they want and can use to rebuild their brand going forward. And they need to take a step back, take a look at that and embrace that as they go forward, right. not set it to the side and look past it. Um, well said. I will also, and I want the audience to know that not only is Andrew a customer, lawyer, but he believes in Chuck so much, you did this on a pro bono basis, didn't you? I did. Give out your website so folks can find out more about your law firm and what you do for Americans. It's ntwistle-law.com. I'm very pleased to have with us a local editor of the Westchester Business Journal and then some other papers, Karen McBride. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, why is Tater's Dodge so important to preserve and keep in the community? Well, there are a number of economic uh, factors here. Uh, first, obviously, is this is um, you know a family business that's been in this community for almost a hundred years. You know, they've put everything they have into this business, so this would be devastating, I would imagine, to them. Um, but there are also, you know, there, there are property tax issues, there are payroll tax issues. Um, there's so much that they, you know they're paying into the community. Yes. But then there are some less obvious effects of something like this. You know, we're talking about people that, that live here, that work here, that eat in the local restaurants, that shop in the local mm -hmm. stores. So, you know, there's a ripple effect. Right. I think in, in your article that came out in your newspaper, you also talked about, you know, is it fair for Chrysler not to evaluate businesses on their merit? Because basically your business is profitable. You don't cost Chrysler any money whatsoever. So if you are an asset to the company, why are they getting rid of a positive thing? Right? Well, I think that's some of the questions that the dealers are asking. You yeah. know, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to why, which dealers they're, they're slating to close. Right. And certainly, as you said, some of these dealers are, you know, they're, they're contributing so much, again, in terms of property taxes and payroll taxes. Yes. And, and they're also not giving them enough time to yeah. really try to fight this.
some of the most important people on, at Tater's Dodge are the staff, and that means the mechanics. Chuck is a mechanic and the owner, and we have another one, Rob. Uh, Rob Holman, who is not only, ha you've been here, what, 17 years? Correct. Your son works here too, doesn't he? Yep. So this is really a family kind of business. It doesn't matter if you got a Neon or a Viper, I fix every car like it's my own. I like that statement. You fix every car like it's your own. You probably think that way too, don't yes. you? Every time I call Tater's Dodge, there's one person that answers the phone, and she is so integral of this whole organization. Her name is Roseanne Stent, and she's here today. Welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. She is so personable. And with Chuck the mechanic, and Robert the other mechanic, and everybody caring about everybody, this is an institution that, that the community of South Salem, that the world of Chrysler needs to keep. If you could send a message to Chrysler right now to tell them what you think about what they're trying to do, what would you say? I would say they need to come here and take a look at the place and see the people and maybe answer the phone for a day and see, you know, the, the span that uh, Tater's Dodge covers. We have people that come from all over mm -hmm. and usually each phone call starts with, um, someone told me I need to call Taters because they <laughs> give the best service. I'm very pleased today to have with us um, many of Chuck's customers, longtime customers, and two of them are a husband, wife, a team, Robert and Virginia Curran. Welcome to the show, Virginia. Thank you. And nice welcome to, be to the here. show, Robert. Thank you. Glad You've been customers be for what, 25 years? At least, okay. probably more. If Tater Dodge didn't exist anymore. What hardship would that be on you guys? It would be a big disappointment because the reason that we have a Dodge, the reason we've kept getting a Dodge is because of taters. We could be elsewhere. Another great customer, Scott Grayson, who happens also to be the president of the New York, Connecticut Viper Club. Is that correct? That's correct. Welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. You know, you owning a Viper and being very influential amongst, amongst Viper owners, Tater's Dodge must be more important to you than someone who just comes in and services one car, right? Absolutely. Uh, Chuck uh, is also uh, functions as the technical director for the club. Uh, he effectively is the technical director for most of the country and extending out to Europe. Uh, his assistance in the phones uh, with problems for all the club members mm -hmm. uh, is renowned. And when you say technical director, what does that mean exactly? Someone calls him up and then get an answer for a problem? Uh, essentially, yes. He, uh, he basically is uh, the godfather uh, to all the owners. We have another customer here who's generously donated his time to come here and talk a little bit about and support Tater's Dodge. His name is Frank Boetti. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming here. What's your relationship with Tater's Dodge? Well, um, my relationship started about, I'm 48 years old, and it started about 44 years ago when my grandfather came here. He was a uh, caretaker for the Halley Estate, mm -hmm. and, um, which was about 75 acres in Chappaqua, along with the Schaefer Estates and everything mm -hmm. like that. So he used to come here and buy his cars. And coming over here, I really thought back, and I remember coming in here with him, and uh, that's where it you know, began. Right. Later on, I have about seven Dodge trucks that I use for my business, and, uh, and a Viper, and he's um, serviced them all. Very pleased to have another customer. We have so many customers of Taters coming out. Ray Morris, welcome to the show. Steve, my pleasure. How long have you been a customer? I've been coming here for about 30 years now. What, what kind of impact do you think it would have if they closed his dealership down here? Well, on a personal basis, it's obvious. Yeah, uh, devastating. For me. Yeah. But uh, I think for the community, it's a historical piece of property, a historical right. business. And I also think that it's, I think it's an integral part. We're a small community. Yes. And uh, we're going to miss something. I, to me, if it was even costing Chrysler a little bit, to keep this place here, it's yeah. good PR. I'm very pleased to have with me another customer of Tater's Dodge, Bob Bowen. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us your history with Tater's. How long have you been coming here? I moved to town in 1960. I had a 57 Plymouth with a broken torsion bar. Hmm. 
And I pulled in here, and uh, their head mechanic, Leo, said, I think I can take care of you today. He replaced the torsion bar, and I was on my way and back to work. And that was the beginning of a relationship that started in 1960, and it stays today. What, how, what kind of impact do you see if this dealership was closed down would have on this community? Well, I think it would have, it would have quite a bit of impact. I, I, uh, personally, it would kill me yeah. because I depend upon Tater Dodge. I am very pleased to have with us a best-selling author and a Wall Street insider who knows Wall Street inside and out, knows what accountability should be and what was lacking over the last few years. A gentleman we've had on our show time and time again. His name is Norb Vonnegut. Welcome to the show, Norb. Thanks for having me back, Steve. One of the th common thread that I hear with everybody talking is that they know they can depend on Chuck Tater when they have a problem with the car 24-7. I wish the guy wouldn't work 24-7, but they can depend on him. He lives here, he stands behind his work. And that's what we need more Americans to do, don't we? We absolutely need that. We have to take responsibility. And you know, this morning in, in speaking with Chuck, I, I learned for the first time that his family actually contributed to Chrysler yes. back in the early 80s. Yes. And what's going on? Here's, here's <laughs> loyalty. Here's a family that has worked hard all their lives. They've played by the rules and boom, yeah. something big and powerful beyond their control came along and pulled the rug out from underneath them. Right. You could say, if you could send a message to Chrysler right now, what would you say? Well, what I would say is, is look, Chrysler, you may think that you need to rationalize the dealerships. There, there are 15 Chrysler dealerships in the Westchester County. But, you know, that's no good to cut dealerships if you're going to lose sales. And I've got to believe we've seen so many loyal customers. Uh, where are they going to go? Hi, I'm Ingrid Tater. I'm Chuck's sister, and I thank you all very much for coming here and promoting our dealership. Thank you. I'm Chuck Tater, Tater Stodge. Thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it. Hi, I'm Margaret Tater, Chuck's and Ingrid's mother, and thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can get more information about the people, the issues at InsiderExclusive.tv. Come back again.